Mr. Speaker, with all respect that I have for Honorable Kenan, I think he has been mixed up with the bills because the bill he's debating is a bill in the next order after this. And I think for the convenience and the relevance rule, I have should noticed stick. so, yeah. but since his ass is winding up, let him wind up. No, I, I, sorry. I, I, I think you have limited your horizon of appreciation of this particular bill, my dear sister. The bill. Adam Thank, you. Kainan. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Article 43 of our Constitution defines access to health, universal health care services as the right to the highest attainable standards of health. Mr. Speaker, the World Health Organization also defines universal health coverage as access to promotive, preventive, curative, rehabilitative, and palliative health services, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, there are certain things that in this bill, first of all, we used to have uh, uh, NHIF as a department of Ministry of Health. That gave birth to the NHIF Act. The NHIF Act, because of the changing realities, Mr. Speaker, has had certain lacunas. It is these lacunas that this bill attempts to address, Mr. Speaker, through digitization of the health records, Mr. Speaker, through promotion of health tourism, Mr. Speaker, through provision for telemedicine, Mr. Speaker, through provision of health information system, and Mr. Speaker, more importantly, like where I come from, the, the, we come from very remote villages, Mr. Speaker. The issue of uh, remote patients monitoring, Mr. Speaker, is something that is critical because I remember now the coincidence that I present, and this is the second coincidence, Mr. Speaker, that I'm representing. We got our first medical doctors, Mr. Speaker, three years ago, four years ago. You can imagine the challenges those people have been going through. But Mr. Speaker, with the, this bill, some of these things can be, can, can be reduced. Mr. Speaker, this will also reduce the issue of administrative costs. The issue of uh, data protection and privacy, Mr. Speaker, will also be very important. The issue of interoperability, Mr. Speaker. You can have one hospital, Mr. Speaker, in the farthest part of the world, having an exchange program with another hospital, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the issue of health innovation is also critical. Mr. Speaker, there are certain things that we need to look at. There are countries that have succeeded in, their, in the provision of uh, their social health care mechanism. Countries like Germany, UK. In Africa, our neighbor Rwanda here, Mr. Speaker, a small country has had a very successful uh, 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 social health care uh, uh, mechanism. Countries like India, uh, Indonesia, Ghana in West Africa, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, these things are critical. But there are certain things that we must also sound that are alarming. Mr. Speaker, the issue of the definition of household. Where I come from, or where you come from, our household means completely different from a household in Europe. And therefore, we'll be amending to provide for a household as an African household, not a Western household, Mr. Speaker. Like if you talk of Aden Kainan's household, I can assure you, you'll be talking about tens of people. A household in Western Europe means a man, wife, and a kid. You, if you define the household of the Honorable Dr. Moses Watangula, you can imagine the change. I think these are things that we'll be looking at. We'll bring an amendment, actually, to bring this into life. Mr. Speaker, equally, we're also doing an over-legislation. There are certain things that require the fact that we want to modernize and inject a bit of modernism, efficiency, Mr. Speaker, in our healthcare system doesn't mean that we over-legislate everything that even requires just some administrative pronouncement. Mr. Speaker, I've looked at this. We want to cure everything. We are defining qualification for the chair. We are defining qualification for the person who is going to be the top quality assurance officer, Mr. Speaker. These things require administrative efficiencies, not legislation, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we also need to protect the officers who are there right now. It's like we are assuming we are starting from zero. There are officers who have diligently served NHIF, Mr. Speaker, and therefore their right to a decent job must also be protected, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in this particular bill, I'm aware that this is a country of regions. This is a country of tribes. This is a country of, uh, call it, because that is the foundation of the nation state of the Republic of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, we must be careful because right now the information outside there is part of the provision of this bill is meant to provide employment opportunities and exit those who are there, Mr. Speaker. If that is the agenda, then I can assure you, you will not succeed. If the agenda is yes, to modernize, uh, then we'll be there to support this particular bill, Mr. Order. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, finally. Mr. Speaker, with all respect that I have for Honorable Kenan, I think he has been mixed up with the bills because the bill he's debating 
is a bill in the next order after this. And I think for the convenience and the relevance rule, I have should noticed stick. so, yeah. but since his ass is winding up, let him wind up. No, uh, <laughs> sorry. I, I, I think you have limited your horizon of appreciation of this particular bill, my dear sister. You need to look at the bill holistically. Just wind up. But I think, let me, let me say this, and I read. Let, yes, no, no. Let me read this. And there's no confusion at all, at all. The bit I'm trying to say is, if you look at the, both the letter and the spirit of both bills, the speaker, then there's a bit of reference to the existing stuff. So I'm sounding alarm. Just this. Even as you operationalize this, the qualifications that you have given, I can assure you by the time we pass this, the next thing that you'll see is opportunities and vacancies for directors and this. Let's accept this. That's the reality. And that's what I'm alluding to. And I really understand what... I can bet that, Mr. Speaker, after we enact this, that is the next thing that you'll be seeing. I'm saying it is good, but we shall also have regard for those who are there because this country has some of the best human resource companies. That's the bit I'm trying to say. I'm not in any way insinuating any improper motive, actually, on, on the good chairman, my friend, Dr. Bosoke, uh, Bo, Bo, Bokose. And finally, Mr. Speaker, there's one thing that we must accept as a country. Mr. Speaker, we have legislated. We have done everything. What we require is goodwill. I don't know how we should have, you, I'm told you have your own hypocritic uh, office, Mr. Speaker, in the medical field. There is something that we need to eject so that once we have professionals in this particular field, the challenges NHIF has had, Mr. Speaker, will not be there. And therefore, as it is, subject to those provisions that will bring an amendment like the definition of a household, so that it contextualizes the African framework. It's a good bill. We support it. And I hope it's going to inject fresh blood and energy in our health sector. I support.